talking to FrankRowan.tv, we're used to hearing your expertise on TV talking about the fight game, and now we're here in your gym. I've asked the boxers what it's called. They said there's no name, it's just Richie's Place. So tell us a little bit about how this place and how it all got started. Yeah, we've been here for probably about a year now. Um, we first got, I first got involved with a local promoter called Ken Purchase. Uh, Ken has since left the gym and uh, we've just carried it on. Um, we've got a lot of lads here, I've got about 20 to 25 boxers here. Um, looking to turn professional, I've got about 10 pros and the others are looking to turn professional. Some good amateurs coming through. But also we work with the local police here in Aston. We, we train young offenders. So yeah, well, I think we're a good service to, to the community really, in a much needed area. How difficult is it to keep a boxing gym going, Richie? Yeah, it ain't easy to be quite honest, you know, just to get three quid off these tight buggers is, is really hard sometimes. But yeah, we have to charge subs because we have to pay the rent on the place. But uh, yeah, if anything, the, the bad thing about this gym, it's quite cold. We can't afford the eating, so they have to, they have, they have to earn their, their heat, really. But yeah, it, but apart from that, yeah, it's, it's OK. I mean, I do all the sweeping up, you know, I've gone from world champion to sweeping, sweeping up the floors. But hey, someone's got to do it, so I'll get on with it. If it's any consolation, no boxing gym I've been to in the country has heating in it, Richie, so you Oh, You're right. Um, how do you explain this? Uh, for us, I guess, from the public outside looking, there's a real revival here in Birmingham in the, in, for boxers. Yeah, there is. I think, you know, there's always been the talent here. It's just that the lads have either moved away, gone down to London, gone up to Sheffield. There's always been a hotbed of talent in, in Birmingham, the black country. Um, you know, and since I've got this gym established, people know that I won a world title they know I must have been doing things right and so they've come and had a look and they've stayed and I've had Jamie Coxey he stayed with me for six or seven months he liked what we did obviously Matt and, and Don Broaders good fires have come they've sampled what I do and they said yeah I like a bit of this so yeah it, there is a little bit of a revival going on I just want to produce good lads from this area really um, and keep them here and they're obviously we're working with Frank as well so we're going from strength to strength I know once you've sort of been in the boxing game, it does stay in your blood, but you sort of went down the TV and punditry route. Yeah. Was there a moment where you thought, no, I want to get back and get grassroots and get hands on, or did it just almost just happen and you, you just went that way? Well, I was very lucky. When I, when I retired, I had television uh, ring me up asking if I'd come and commentate. Um, I've obviously done a few Olympics for the year as well. So, yeah, I've been, I've been very lucky. But there's always that urge to come back into boxing. I mean, I'm 40 years of age now and I still look at fighters and I think I could beat him. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always that urge and I can understand why, why boxers do come back. But you've got to know when, it, when you know, it's, it's over. And it is over for me. There was always that urge to come back. But because I work in television, commentating, and now I'm, I'm involved with the training side of things, it's like I've never left, really. Um, and I know exactly what they're going through. And they look at me and they know I've gone through it. What, what I give them in this gym, they know I've been there and I've seen it, I've done it. And so there's a lot of respect there. And, of course, I've got my old man with me as well, Lenny Woodall. He's a great guy. Um, and he's, he's like the old, the old owl in the gym, really. He looks over things and gives advice. So, yeah, we've got a real good setup. I've got Pete Round, John. Peg, who were matchmakers and, and trainers. I've also got another lad coming through now, Tommy Owens, who failed a brain scan, but he's coming into the, the boxing as a trainer. So we're a good, happy family, and we talk and we learn off each other. Well, let's get on to your boys, Don Broadhurst, Matthew Macklin, fighting on Friday the 31st of October at the Aston Villain Event Centre. First of all, you know, Matthew Macklin, 26 now, he's really keen to get onto the world title level. Uh, John, um, Richie, what is he going to have to do to get there? Well, I think he's got all the all, he's got the talent to do it. You know, he's got all the tools for the job. It's just that I think in the past, no disrespect to anyone else, but I think sometimes he's neglected the boxing skills that he has. I think he's been improved certainly on the inside with Billy Graham. Billy's done a great job with him. Now I'm just trying to get him back to boxing a little bit more, boxing at range now and again, because it's not all about inside work. He's got to be able to box on the outside as well. But Matthew Macklin is a lad who he's got a lot of talent. Uh, mid-range, short-range and at long-range and if I can just get him back to boxing a little bit more at mid and long-range then I think uh, you'll see a new Matthew Macklin hopefully. Don Broadhurst topping the bill here for the first uh, time and uh, going 12 rounds for the first time, going for his first professional fight for title, the Commonwealth uh, title and fighting at home. Is it too much for his young shoulders? No, definitely not. Don is the kid who's he's absolutely 
full of confidence. I mean, I'm sure you spoke <laughs> yeah. to him. And he's full of confidence. Bit of a joker in the gym, bit of a laugh. Uh, but, you know, I think he'll have no problem with the limelight, with the 12 rounds. You've got to remember, he's boxed for England at the Commonwealth Games and he's, a, he's an England international. And he's been, his body has been through a lot anyway. He's, he's used to train at a very high intensity. Mm-hmm. It's now just converting that amateur speed uh, um, and speed of movement and slowing him down slightly and, uh, and putting it, put it in his head that it's an endurance-based sport now more than, than the speed of the amateurs so he's adapting he's doing some you know sometimes he's doing eight and ten round spars against guys that are heavier than him and I'm overlooking things and he will have no problems doing 12 rounds um, I have to give him a roast in now and again if I know he's, he slept in now and again in the morning so I say get up early get, be disciplined get on the road get running now and again but he doesn't tell doesn't tell lies he'll say Richie I've slept in today I say tomorrow morning you make sure you get up early so yeah I have to kick his backside now and again but um, he's a hard trainer along with Matt and yeah those those two they'll go on and win major honours. Finally Richie you're going to be in the corner with a fighter that's topping the bill going for, as I say for his first professional title and it's a it's a Birmingham fighter Birmingham bill and it's going to be that great you know Birmingham atmosphere how proud are you going to be? Yeah, I'm going to be very proud, you know, I've come on leaps and bounds, I would say. I've been in the professional gym now, this gym for a year, and I was in another gym for, another, for a year as well. So I've had a couple of years. It's been a learning, learning curve for me, but I'm enthusiastic. I, I've been down the path of being a world champion. I know how to get there. It's just, you know, it's just what I know. I was just converting into, into what I know into, onto the boxer, really. Um, and that, that is a problem because sometimes there's a bit of frustration there. Some, sometimes you get a lad who has got a great attitude, but he hasn't quite got the talent. And other times you've got a kid who's got great talent, but he just ain't got the attitude. So I get frustrated, but I've learned that you've got to have patience as a trainer. And I'll be very proud taking my lad in there first time for Commonwealth title. I think I won the Commonwealth title in my ninth fight. This is his ninth fight as well. So, yeah, fingers crossed. You never know what can happen, but he's prepared properly. They both have. And there's no reason why we shouldn't have two winners. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.